Our goal in analyzing this data set is to generalize the results to the population that the sample was drawn from. In other words, if we see changes in functional connectivity in our sample, can we say that these changes would likely be seen in the population as well? To test this, we will run a group level or second level analysis. We calculate the mean and standard error for a correlation estimate, and then test whether the mean is statistically significant. In the last video, we analyzed a single run for a single subject. In other words, we ran a first level analysis. This is great for seeing whether there are significant correlations within a single subject, but we cannot do any group inference. To load more subjects, we will first have to download more subjects. Go back to the arithmetic study on the OpenNeuro website and download the functional and anatomical data for subjects 2 through 6. This will take a while, so I'm going to speed it up, but after you just do a couple, you should be able to get the basic pattern down. If your downloads folder is the default, you can move all of the downloaded images to their respective folders by navigating to the arithmetic directory and copying and pasting this code, which you can find in the information box down below. Then from the Congoey, click on the Setup tab and click Basic. Change the number of subjects from 1 to 6 and observe how the number of sessions and the repetition time expands to reflect the total number of subjects. Each number corresponds to each subject in the data set. For example, the third number in repetition time corresponds to the third subject that we load. If the third subject's TR was 2.5, for example, we could make an edit like this. In reality, each subject's TR was 3.56, so I'll change it back. We will then load each subject's anatomical and functional data. The easiest way to do this is to use the Find filter beneath the Image Extensions field. In other words, right here. For the structural images, type T1W, since every anatomical image in this dataset contains that string. And then click Find. The current directory and its subdirectories will be searched for any images that contain the string. Notice that I've already analyzed sub01 in an earlier video, so I have many different files that all contain sub01t1w.nii. What I need to do is find the original, which is right here, and then I can hold control to select the other images for the other subjects. Now also hold shift and select all the images and then click import. You should see something like the following. As before, scroll through the slices of each subject's anatomical data to make sure that nothing looks like an anomaly. Now do the same procedure for the functional images. Click on the functional tab and use the find filter to look for any images in your directories that contain the string bold. Again, sub1 has already been processed, so we have a lot of files. The original one should be right about... Where the fuck is it? I'm not deleting this take. I don't give a shit. You get to see what it's like for me to work all day, bust my ass making these things for you guys. Good enough appreciation. Okay, it's right here. And then we select everybody else as well. Make sure to highlight all of the subjects over here by shift and clicking, and then click import. After a few moments, you should see a pop-up window that says six files assigned to six subjects. Again, take the time to look at each subject to make sure that there are no anomalies. Now this guy has gigantic ventricles. Is that going to be a problem? We don't know for sure yet. We can still probably segment the gray matter without any problems, but I would definitely keep an eye on this and see whether any of the estimates turn out to be outliers because the ventricles may have some kind of indirect effect on that. 
Now click the pre-processing button to begin pre-processing all the subjects in a single batch. This will take about five to six minutes per subject or about 30 minutes total. We're going to fade out now and come back when it has finished. When it has finished, check the ROIs and covariates for soul tabs. This time scrolling through each subject. Subject two, for example, if we look at the scrubbing field, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight volumes that have been marked as outliers. Each of these marked volumes will be inserted as a regressor into that subject's first level design matrix. This is also called scrubbing, which removes their variance from the rest of the time series. I'm not going to go through all the subjects here, but just like we did with the first level analysis, you should check each one to make sure that everything was segmented appropriately. Now click on done to begin denoising. This will take a few minutes per subject. And again, we're going to fade out here and come back when it's finished. When denoising has finished, click on the denoising first level tab to review the effect of accounting for different confound regressors. The layout is the same. The only difference is that now you can click through all of the subjects. Review them using the same criteria that we did in the denoising video, and then click the done button to proceed with the first level modeling. When it's done, the preview window of the tab analysis first level will be the same as for the individual subject analysis, but now with all of the subjects listed. Click through them all to review their connectivity maps after denoising has been performed. If you are satisfied with the quality checks, click on done to begin the second level analysis. Make sure that all subjects and all conditions are checked and then click start. This will only take a few minutes. When you have finished the group analysis, you will have access to the last tab, results second level, which looks something like this. This will display a whole brain map of the correlation for the contrast that you specified in the setup tab. You may wonder what contrasts exactly we did specify. The default that has already been created for you is a condition called rest, which is a correlation map generated for each subject in each ROI. You can see this in the setup tab under covariates second level. These are then averaged over all the subjects by using a contrast vector in the covariates tab of the setup screen. You will see a list of covariates that will be entered into the second level model. The covariate all subjects has a contrast vector 111111, representing an average taken over all six of the subjects. Click back and forth between the setup and results second level tab to see the correspondence between how the experiment is set up and the results that are generated. What if we wanted to create another contrast? For example, compare the first three and the last three subjects as though they were different groups. We first need to create two separate contrast vectors, one for the first three subjects and one for the last three. From the setup tab, click on covariates second level and hover your mouse over the bottom left corner of the covariates menu. Click on the plus sign and label the covariate group A. In the values field, enter the following values, 111000, and do the same for another covariate called group B, entering this vector, 000111. Observe how the red dots change according to which contrast vector you have selected. The dots will be positive for the first three subjects for group A and positive for the last three subjects of group B. Now, when you click on the results second level tab, there will be two new subject effects, group A and group B. Highlighting either group separately will show the results for that group. To take a contrast between the two, on the other hand, we will hold shift and click to highlight both groups and enter a between subjects contrast 
of one, negative one. You can also click on this menu to automatically do it for you. For example, if we wanted to know where group A was greater than group B, or vice versa. If you want to account for other sources of subject level variance, such as age or sex, these can also be entered into the covariates second level tab. Create a new contrast, for example, age, and enter the values for each subject. For example, let's say that the first subject was 18, the second subject was 21, the third was 24, 26, 17, 19. I'm making these up, but you should have access to these if you ran the experiment yourself. If you want to mean center any of these covariates, such as age, click on the covariate tools menu and select orthogonalize select covariates and highlight the all subjects covariate. This will mean center all the age values relative to the total number of subjects that we have. You can then go to the results second level tab, click on age, and this map will show you where there are significant correlations with that. The resulting correlations will show where there's a significant correlation, again, between the correlation effects and a covariate such as age. For example, does the correlation within a voxel such as this one significantly show an association with increasing age? Now that we have carried out our second level contrast, we will go on to interpret the results, which requires another video in itself. We'll cover this and more in the next video.